Welcome on back to the channel, fishing freaks, and to the great and wonderful outdoors. Looks like we got a bluebirder right now on the Dead Sea. Already brought a banana because uh, yeah, it doesn't even matter on the Dead Sea. I'm gonna try to catch some crappie though. All right, we may look for a bass or two, may catch one in the process, but you know I have been trying to catch these things up in the dirt for a while now. So hopefully today is the day. Yeah, buddy. We are going to slide up in here to Marina. We're going to slide on in, get that rod bent, hopefully. Now, I've been catching uh, the bigger female crappie here in the last month uh, away from the bank. Uh, the bigger ones have been suspended. The last lake I went to, I did end up catching uh, some shallow crappie, but they were just staging males. Uh, this is what's really interesting. You know, the rare, the really dark crappie, uh, they almost look like black crappie, white ones. I came to that realization because when I cleaned the crappie, all of them were males. There were no females. And so it's, it's really cool to see those crappie all colored up. So what I'm gonna do is go up in there around some shallow uh, rocks and brush and stuff and I'm just going to make some uh, some fan cast with some some jigs from around swimming can I talk I'm so excited about crop vision and then I've got a cork rig that is is very effective uh, this time of year when they move up shallow so we're gonna look at those two rigs we're gonna leave the the big pole the big 10-foot scoper pole uh, in the box today, hopefully. Hopefully we won't have to do any of that. So, this is the fun stuff. Let's we'll see if they're up shallow. All right, we're probably gonna have to do some re-rigging, because uh, cause that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna have to uh, start the day on that note. Unfortunately, I'm gonna pick up the cork rig, because it's, it's in full function. Got him. First cast with the cork, and we are hooked up on a colored up crappie. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Natural colored dangle dart. <clears throat> so that is a white crappie, but he has got his tuxedo on. He's colored up. So there's some in front of me here around this dock, but obviously there's some up shallow as well. And we're gonna keep some of these today. It would be a shame not to, but let's check out what we got here. Let's check out what we got. Oh yeah, got an 11 incher. Gotta keep the first one. That's the rule, you gotta keep the first one. Okay, that is... Uh, Extremely good start to the day. I'm gonna make a few more casts. I'm gonna show you guys this rig that I got here. Oh, got him. All right, shallow. Kabunk. This guy's a little small, so we're gonna throw him back. That is a male crappie up there, shallow spawning. I'm gonna keep casting in this little area because there's likely quite a few of them. Oh, right there under the dock. Got him. Another little guy, which we will let go. Can't resist that dart, just looks like a little minnow, not doing anything. Oh 
yeah. Under the dock. A little better one. Oh, goodness, he come off. Oh my gosh, y'all, I am so pumped right now. I've been waiting on this bite like all season. It's finally here. Water is 65 and the crappie are moving in, baby. They're moving in. I see some stagers up underneath the docks. They are up on the bank. It is going down. So the rod I'm gonna use for this is our micro series. In the, it's a gold series micro series. It's a light, it's not an ultra light. This is my favorite all around crappie fishing pole for vertical jigging and just fan casting. It's also my trout rod. Can really do a lot of panfish species with this, this pole right here. The only thing I don't use it for is scoping those those crappie because I want to keep the keep the bait out in front a little bit if I'm trying to go for uh, some big ones on this on the scope but this is seven foot so I like that you know typical bass rod length you get a little bit more leverage more casting distance with it but it's still it's a buggy whip and you can you can handle throwing those little baits. So I've got uh, the thousand size spinning reel on here. 15 pound braid, I do believe. I love fishing the braid because it's just so easy to cast. Very, very easy to cast. And if, uh, if you're gonna do the whole braid on your spinning reel, I suggest using an eight strand over uh, like a standard four strand. A four strand is more abrasive, abrasive resistant, but the eight strand casts a lot better. And when you're crappie fishing, you're not, not really worried about abrasion resistance. All right, I'm tying up my connection knot here with an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. I have a uh, 16th ounce underspin head on there. So that's good for stained water, you know, swimming it around, you get that extra flash. And this bait right here, the Snacky Swimmer, there's two different sizes in it. Um, this is electric chicken right here. And, and this, this little combo, just swimming it around is just awesome. I catch everything in the lake on this. Bass, crappie, white bass, catfish, whatever. Uh, anything that is eating minnows up in the shallows, and even bedfish this time of year, we'll, we'll probably catch a bass on this today. So it's a really fun bait to just throw around if you're just trying to get bites for whatever. It's really fun, but searching for crappie and getting bigger ones, uh, I like to throw the larger size snacky swimmer and you just get some big bites on it. All right, pretty much the exact same setup here. Thousand size reel in, uh, in our Guggen Gold Series spinning reels. I've got the uh, 15 pound uh, eight strand braid on there, same leader, eight pound leader, but I have a line through cork on this. This is a fill cork. Uh, they make really nice corks. And I have a bobber stop, all right, like you'd use flipping. You know, we call it a bobber stop. We use it on our flipping setups all the time for Texas rigs, but Today I'm actually using it for what it is named for, a bobber stop. So what makes this really neat, when this hits the water, it slides up and it stops. So that bait is gonna sit two feet under the surface. But when I cast it, the cork is connected to the rig. So instead of having you know a, a clamp on bobber up here, that becomes more difficult to cast. You got two things, they kind of spin around, they go tangled, whatever. This all stays together. So it, it enables me to cast it easier. I can pitch it. I can also get it up under docks because the whole thing is staying together. And then when it hits the water, it goes stops right there and you're good to go. Just watch it go under. Oh yeah. Guys, to me there is no more fun crappie fishing bite than fishing shallow and getting that thump. Hit it. They just hit it so hard. They hit it like a bass does. 
There's one. Oh, goodness gracious. That one bopped me. Got him. There we go. Yes, sir. That's a good white crop. That might be a female. Nice one. No, 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 no. Come here. Coming home with me. That's two bites in a row right there. Just dropped off. Got a little deeper, so. Came over a shallow spot, didn't get any bites, and then dropped off, cast up there by the stick. There's another one. Oh yeah. That's a largemouth bass. Oh, it's a spotted bass. And he gets choked. See you, buddy. Oh, 25, 30 mile an hour winds. Not ideal for the 16th ounce jig. Yes, sir. Oh, no, we got a bass. I guess they are spawning. So you're right up there on them rocks. That, that one would fillet nice. It really would. This bag right here, this is this is the crappie designated plastics bag, and it is perfect for this. So this is the two and a half inch snacky. I'm just gonna go with standard monkey milk. Got some crappie on the muck and milk. He's a little colored up, but not much. 11 incher, perfect. There's another one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. About the same size, and I've got a really good recipe for these to show you guys. Oh, he's just, I mean, he helped measure, but barely. That's it, right there. Yes, sir. Bass. Nope, it's a crop. Smashed it. A little short. Man, they're wanting it. All right, let's do it. I just have to start keeping some of these little ones. I've got about 400 yards of braid on my trolling motor right now. Nice. Mm. 
that was, that was a fun one there. That is very good reason, y'all, to always carry some form of knife in your boat because that can ruin your fishing day right there. I usually keep a little wrench where I can take the, uh, the lock nut off the prop and make sure there's none left in there. I'll have to do that off the water today, but it can break the seal and ruin your trolling motor. You don't want that. A drop. There's an LMB. See, bud? Mm. Come on, baby. Wow. Another bass. Crazy. This is Dinker Bass Math right here. Oh my gosh. There we go, there's a crappie. Definitely a couple up here, super shallow. Got that one. Come on, baby. Dang it. Ah, if I catch one more spotted bass, I'm just gonna fillet him. I have caught more bass than I have crappie. Gosh, this is a big bass. Oh, he's got me. Oh, he's got me around something. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. There's a big, large mouth bass up on my pole. I knew this would happen eventually. Got to play him out with the micro much you can do. Just gotta enjoy the ride. Come up, yeah, come up here on the back deck with me. Yeah, do one more jump. There we go. Here's a nice three and a halfer. Possible fry garter. That is a fun fight. On that pole, that is a fun fight. Wow. Well, if you don't have any uh, snacky swimmers, definitely suggest the two and a half inch. All right, y'all, this has just turned into fish madness, catching everything, getting so many bites. Probably had over 30 fish you know, between the crappie and the bass. 
I'm going to cruise into a little calmer area. I was fishing wind. Uh, we've got an overcast that's rolled in here. I'm going to go back to that uh, cork rig and see if I can catch a couple more crappies. I really didn't want to catch that many uh, as, as far as to keep. I want to catch a thousand of them, but as far as to keep, I don't, I, the freezer's doing pretty good right now. So I'm going to see if I can get any of these calmer water crappies. They're not fully loaded on the bank yet. It's just kind of here and there, but my gosh, there's so many bass. I mean, it, it, it's like they're fighting for territory. Okay, something just took off with my cork. It's gonna be a bass. That was uh, about a four or five pounder. Just don't have any control with that bobber. It has gotten so windy out here. This little calm spot that I'm in is about the only place I can fish. Uh, most effective way to catch them right now, by far, is throwing the snacky swimmer around. This bait literally catches everything that swims. And I, so I've got this on the 16th ounce head and I love that uh, combination with the two and a half. You can just swim it really slow. And there's a, a two inch as well, which I throw on crappie quite a bit, you know, when they're being finicky. So, it's, you know, half inch smaller. But I love throwing this because it just keeps the rod bent. I mean, sometimes you go out bass fishing or even crappie fishing, you want to work hard to try to get some big bites, get those nice rewarding bites sometimes. You just want to keep that pole bent and keep the action going. And uh, that's exactly what this little thing does. GoogleSquad.com, you can use code LFG, save 10% at checkout, but get some monkey milk. That's this color right here. It's kind of like a pearl uh, glitter color. And then also uh, get some stained water, water colors if you've got stained water. Electric chicken is, is money. I mean, I catch bass and, and crappie on that electric chicken as well. And we got some real clear water colors like pro, pro blue red and all those fun colors as well. Uh, the cork rig I thought was going to be the program started off strong and when the crappie are up there shallow and they're loaded and you can just cast to the same spot you just need to keep that bait in place this is amazing and also keeping it around cover um, where you don't have a long extended pole and you're you know just keeping it on top of them this allows you to do that. So. It just got way too windy though. The cork was just blowing around and I wasn't able to keep it in place. And the most effective way to fish for them was just fan casting around because they're they're not loaded, loaded up right now. And I just caught, I don't know how many bass uh, in the process of, of crappie fishing. So got about six or seven in the well. Um, typically this time of year I keep, you know, five to 10 every time I go and it just adds up. Keep fresh crappie uh, going into the pan and I've got a recipe that I'm working on that is really good. Even our kids love to eat it. Uh, Stephanie is dialing it in and um, next time I go out crappie fishing, I'll, I'll probably show you guys that catch and cook action and, and show you that recipe. It's amazing. So I'm going to sign it off for today, guys. So subscribe, smash, get in the outdoors. I'll see you on the next one.